Best honor. He's an easy winner in the Holy Bull. And here he comes now. Greatest honor finding his best ride right when he needs to. And he's going to run down, drain the clock to win the Fountain of Youth. Register now for the 2024 Pass the Wire Kentucky Derby Seminar. In-depth analysis of every horse, contenders, pretenders, live long shots, and more. The Kentucky Derby Seminar on PassTheWire.com. Reserve your seat today. Remember, nobody does it better. Ciao, ciao, Jim. How are you? Hey, good, good. I've uh, got a, a bit of derby fever. We're like 20-something days away, so uh, exciting. The, the big preps are done. The 100-point races are done. All that's left is the Lexington. Uh, everything else is pretty much uh, bought and paid for. So let's see, let, let, let's see uh, how the race shapes up. Uh, I don't know if anybody's going to get in from the Lexington. There's one horse, uh, the horse that scratched from the bluegrass, the synthetic horse. I think he was on your radar a little bit. Um, I forget his name for the minute. Brad Cox's horse that's only run on synthetic three times. Encino, maybe? Is that it? Encino. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mentioned him last week. I thought he was a little... Uh... Thought he was a little interesting. He's in the Lexington, and you know, he may he may kind of sneak in there late. We'll see what happens, but... Uh... He's not on the list now. We're going to run down to 20 that are on the list uh, now. Give some thoughts on each one of them. Give people a head start. Our Derby seminar is, is, is coming up. To clarify, the Derby seminar, we're going to do the Oaks and the Derby and the four races leading into the Kentucky Derby, which is the Kentucky Derby late pick five that ends in the Kentucky Derby. So those are the races we're going to cover uh live interactive if you miss it no worries there's a replay that goes to everybody that's got a spot so you'll absolutely miss nothing if you can't attend the live version only thing you might miss is the opportunity to ask some live questions but you could always send them to me afterwards we'll get them addressed and we'll see if we can come up with a couple of winners or which is just as valuable a couple of horses to toss yeah yeah all right let's Take a look at this leaderboard and start at the top. Sierra Leone, uh, you and I have both been been talking about this horse since the end of last year. Uh, has done everything right. You know, what What more is there to, to say? Absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, I, I don't think he's a horse that's going to be affected by the draw at all. Uh, some will, some won't. Um, he's one of the ones to me that won't because he's going to drop far back and make his run. He's already shown that he can go pretty wide and go around horses and, you know, lose some ground and still run them down, which I think is uh, a, a, a huge asset in, 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 in the Derby. He does lug in a little bit down the lane. That's, you, you know, something to watch. He did balk a little bit going into the gate in the bluegrass. That's something to watch, especially if he draws outside with that crowd or even inside, you know, with the infield. But, you know, Chad did say they're going to do a lot of gate schooling of him. And, uh, you know, he was able to overcome that in the bluegrass. So I'm not I'm not overly concerned with it. You know, after the Remsen, I said, you know, door knock would never beat him again. So far, I'm right. Uh, I think that trend will continue at least through the first Saturday in May and maybe later later throughout the year. I think he's a serious racehorse. Um, I actually think he's underrated uh, as to how good he really is. And we'll see. We'll see. I think, you know, he's absolutely the deserving favorite. I don't know that he will be the favorite. I think there's a good chance Fierceness is the favorite. Um, and he's the second choice. But we'll see. Who knows? Yeah, I feel like when people talk about this horse, they they're trying to get too cute. 
um, oh, you know, the 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 risen star, he you know wasn't all that impressive. Race was slow. Oh, the bluegrass time came back slow. Didn't want to go into the gate. Uh, this horse has been the most impressive, most consistent out of any horse we've seen since the fall. And he's got the most points. He's got the, the most ability. And I think when people poo poo this horse, they're, I don't know. They're, they're just trying to get too cute and, and say something clever when, you know, in reality, I, I think we should all just be, you know, looking forward to uh, seeing uh, a serious racehorse go up against uh, another, you know, handful of, of strong contenders. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, super top heavy field in the Derby, um, handful of horses that, that I like and, and feel like have a, a legitimate shot to win. And, and he's certainly um, at the top of that list for me. Interesting. You know, I, I will say this, there's three things I like to look for in a Kentucky Derby and, 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 you know, this is outside of handicapping the race, the pace, the setups, and, and you know, everything that goes into kind of painting a picture of how a race you think is going to be run. But three, three characteristics I like um, are a horse that I know is going to be running at the end or I believe is going to be running at the end, a horse that is not going to be, you, you know, impacted so much by the trip, uh, and a horse that has 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 more left in him, hasn't really hit his bottom yet or run his peak race, which we'll talk about when we get to the second contender fierceness. You know, for me, Sierra Leone checks all, 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 all those boxes. Having a guy like Chad train him who brings a horse up to the derby as good as anybody in the game, uh, and I think he's proven that already uh, without winning. Uh, you know, he, he checks all the boxes for me. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, is there a rider that that knows every inch of Churchill Downs better than than Tyler Gaffley owned at this point? Uh, no, Tyler rides Churchill as good as anybody, and you know, I like young, up and coming, strong riders. Tyler certainly. You know, I don't even know if we can call him up and coming anymore. He's kind of got there, so but he's he's still you know a young rider, hungry rider, and you know checks all the boxes for me. Yeah, uh, fierceness, uh, one hundred and thirty six points. Um, you know, like we've talked about on, on previous Kentucky Derby radar shows, just the sort of on again, off again, um, you know, racing pattern, win one, lose one, win one, lose one, uh, you know, no doubt that that Florida Derby was, was certainly impressive, uh, certainly, a a win contender, but in my view, a couple of red flags, uh, that, you know, don't bode well in the Kentucky Derby when you have, you know, a crowded field of, of 20. Uh, it just seems like this horse needs everything to go his way to be able to run um, these big races. And, you know, let's face it, Breeders' Cup, Florida Derby, when things do go this horse's way, he's uh, a monster and uh, very, 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 very tough to beat. Um, but taking a, a short price, you know, two to one, five to two, three to one in, in the Derby as, you know, the likely favorite with needing everything to break his way. Um, I don't know that that I can necessarily get behind that. Um, what did you think? I've got a couple of concerns about, about fierceness, okay? Um, one is the race he ran last time in the Florida Derby would be very difficult for him to duplicate. Uh, under any circumstances, even if he was a consistent horse, which to date he has not been a consistent horse. Uh, like you said, he's run a good one, bad one, win, lose, you, you know, kind of kind of up and down. Uh, the races he's won, he's had relatively soft trips where everything has gone his way. He's never really won a fight as of yet. Uh, and when he's gotten into him, he hasn't won. So, you know, the, the, those are concerns. I would like to see him run the race he ran last time in the Derby 
and I've got reservations that he can duplicate that, especially a horse that's you, you know never put two races like that together. Now, if race day comes and you handicap the race and he's the absolute lone speed, um, or there's one you know you, you, you know speed that he can inhale anytime he wants that he could sit off and he's just going to get a, a perfect trip. Maybe he can put two races like that together, but you know he's yet to do it. I do believe he's going to probably wind up the favorite at post time. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, show me fierceness. You know what I mean? Show me you can be consistent and you can win a fight uh, or you're good enough to put two together and, and, and just run away from these horses and not even have to fight. You know, if you're that good, then you deserve the roses, but I, I, I don't see it as of yet. Uh, and I do think that there'll be some, some, you know, pace pressure up there, at least hopefully if you're betting a closer. And uh, I think he's got his work cut out for him to repeat. Uh, yeah. Interesting thing. The other the other morning I woke up and was, um, you know, scanning some Equibase race charts because who doesn't scan Equibase race charts as soon as they wake up in the morning? Um, and I was looking back at <laughs> I don't <laughs> the last um, the last 20 Kentucky derbies. And there was only one uh, Animal Kingdom's year when they went 48 seconds to the half. Everything else was in the mid 46s. I, I want to say there was only three, maybe four others that were in the 47s. But everything else has been 46 and in, in change going to the half. So you have to figure... If fierceness is up there on the lead, he's definitely going to be be feeling, um, you know, a, a fair bit of pressure from from some of these other horses that that we'll touch on here in the next couple of minutes. I agree with that, uh, and it's interesting you say that because a lot of people said when they changed from the graded stakes uh, earnings system to the point system, we were going to kick a lot of the sprinters out and kind of get slower paces for the mile and a quarter. And that certainly doesn't seem to be what happened at all. Yeah. We kicked um, out the sprinters, but the pace didn't change. <laughs> right. Right. Which, which, you know what that just tells you. Good horses run fast. Yeah. Uh, so catching freedom. I was really impressed with his um, Louisiana Derby. Uh, I thought that that stretch run from him was, was really nice. Um, you know, a, a hurdle for me, and, you know, before I get to the hurdle, let me say, I, I think Catching Freedom is a, a solid win candidate here. Uh, one of the the handful that that I've identified at, at this point, um, in, in my opinion. The hurdle is, like we talked about in the lead up to that uh, Louisiana Derby, is this, we don't often see horses come out of the Louisiana Derby and win the Kentucky Derby. I don't know if that's you know, that, that added week layoff or, or what, but, um, I think I want to say it was like since the nineties, the mid nineties that, um, a Louisiana Derby winner has come back and, and won the Derby. Um, but certainly an, an impressive horse that is going to be running late, the running style that, that you typically want to see, um, a win candidate for me. Um, but like I said, that, uh, that hurdle of just coming out of the Louisiana Derby where we don't see too many Kentucky Derby winners come from in, in recent years. I get it, but, you know, Sierra Leone might fall into that same category, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, you can make that argument for sure. You know, the only, you know I like catching freedom as, as, as a horse. I think he's a nice horse. I think he's improving. Uh I think he's a couple of some of the better ones in here. He's he's not one that, you know, at this early juncture. And again, you know, we haven't handicapped the race yet. We're still what, what a month out. So, you, you know, we got to handicap the race. But he's he's not one that's, you know, on my radar. And, you know, interestingly, usually at this time of year, there's 20 horses going in, maybe 21, 22 that you're looking at as, you know, you include the bubble horses. I usually think about 10 of them could win. This year, there's only three or four for me. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe tops five. So that's interesting. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't usually work that way for me. So, 
Maybe it's a good sign. Maybe it's a bad sign. We'll find out. But uh, Stronghold is one of the ones that I'm I'm very intrigued by. Okay. Uh, I think in the Santa Anita Derby, he proved that he's a fighter. Okay. Uh, you know, he won a fight. And, I, you know, like I said, when we talked about Sierra Leone, I like a horse that could, you know, win a fight and, and, and get down there and, and just out game, game another horse. And, you know, it wasn't just any horse. It was a Bob Baffert, you know, $1 million into mischief horse that got the jump on him and he was able to run down. I watched Stronghold's works leading up into the race. And I noticed that they were working him behind horses and allowing him to pass horses in the stretch. And the first time he did it, he looked okay. Second time he did it, he looked better. Third time he did it, he inhaled him and looked like he was full of confidence. And I said, wow, Phil D'Amato really knows what he was doing here. And, you know, this horse can come off the pace and is really learning, learning what the game's all about. Interestingly, when they interviewed Antonio Frisu, who we've, we've spoken to, we know him, we've had him on the show. Um, you know, he's a great rider and also a very smart rider and smart horseman. When they interviewed him after the show, he said the same thing. He goes, you know, he really loved his horse going into the race because of the way Phil was working, working him. And I knew right away what he meant because I watched that progression in seeing him pass horses, pass horses easier, and then kind of inhale him and pass him full of confidence. And he went out and won that race and ran down, you know, imagination when Frankie DeTore was on imagination and was on a, on a, on a, on a, on a Royal Ascot type role. What he went six races that day. Yeah. Yeah. So stronghold is a horse to me. That's going to be sitting in a very good spot. You know, he's not going to be on the lead. He's going to be sitting, you know, third, fourth, fifth, kind of a catbird seat kind of trip uh, with a very good aggressive rider in the midst of making a name for himself in the U S and, uh, I think he's a dangerous horse. I think, you know, if you short him, you do so at your own risk. Yeah, um, I I agree. I thought, you know, him splitting horses the way he did um, was was really impressive. Um, I don't know if you saw the uh, the jockey cam video. Um, I didn't. Antonio Friso is just, you know, screaming at the top of his lungs as he's splitting those horses. Is he? I got a stretch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a pretty it. cool. Um, but yeah, I think this horse is is you know Was he screaming in English or Italian? Yeah, he's just screaming, like just you know, <laughs> just it. making noise. Um I think this horse is peaking at the right time. Um, you know, you could argue that you know, the, the Sunland Derby isn't, isn't the greatest of, of prep races. Uh, you could even argue that the Santa Anita Derby hasn't been the the greatest of prep races, but um, I thought he had a, a really strong run uh, over the weekend and, you know, definitely a, um, a, a win candidate for me in here. Um, I don't know. I, I keep thinking and, you know, maybe I'm, I'm off base with this, but he just gives me like, like firing line type of uh, vibes, I guess. Um, you know, just uh, a horse like that that is going to run a, a nice race at, you know, probably double digit odds, I would imagine. Um, and, you know, should be should be in the mix um, when you need them to be. Resilience. Resilience is an interesting horse to me. He, he, you know, he comes out of the Wood Memorial and, you know, the Wood Memorial's taking a lot of heat lately for not being a, a derby winning, derby winner producing race. I don't pay much attention to that stuff. You know, uh, you know, historically, the Wood has produced its share of, of Kentucky Derby winners, you know, uh, and a derby winner can come from anywhere. A la Mind That Bird, a la Rich Strike, you know, who knows? So I, I don't pay much mind to that. I think this is a horse that is getting good at the right time, that we don't know how good he really is. He's got a very good style, you know, where, you know, similar to Stronghold, he, he you know, naturally sits, you know, off but close to the pace, gets to jump on the closers. You know, he looked like a big, you know, strapping type of colt to me in the Wood Memorial. Uh, I wasn't overly familiar with him before that race, but I thought that was an impressive race. I like them going into that race. I like them coming out of that race. Uh, always a dangerous barn. Uh, Bill Mott's got a derby win, but not really, I guess, the way that you want it. Uh, 
with a DQ of, of, of maximum security. So I don't I don't know. I, I, I think resilience is, is is a horse that bears a lot of scrutiny in, in, in the Derby. He's definitely a horse that looks to me like he's moving forward and, you, you know, didn't run his best race in the wood. And there's more in the tank. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, would be curious to see why. Um you know why he skipped a a um a prep between the the risen star and um and the wood um but you know i think the the wood was was good enough for him um you know i don't know that i would you know place this one in in the the top quarter of of the field in in my book but you know Bill Mott knows what he's doing. Um, would be his his second start off of a uh, off of a layoff. So certainly a potential. Okay. Uh, Japanese horse, Forever Young. <laughs> yeah, I think kind of like a a prove it to me sort of thing in, in my book, I don't know, some, um, you know, early fair odds projected morning lines that I've seen on this horse has them, you know, around eight to one, um, Japanese horse has never won the, the Derby. Uh, I believe it's, it's coming at some point. Uh, but I don't know that, that this is the year. Um, UAE Derby is, has never produced a, a Derby winner. Um, I know you you just said you don't buy into a lot of that stuff, but that well, you know, the UA coming, Derby is a little different. Yeah, you know, I mean that's a, that's a big trip, right? So and there's also you know we had uh, uh, Bupat uh, Sahin on on the on the show the other day, and he trained Laurel River, and we talked a little bit about why the UAE Derby has not been you know productive, and you know he said not only you know is the trip from the desert and the travel everything and the timing tough. But there's also the quarantine factor. You got to come here and go into quarantine and you lose like four or five days training in quarantine when you get here. And there's no way around that. And that could be vital for these three-year-olds at this time of year and could go a long way to explaining why the UAE Derby has never produced a Kentucky Derby winner, which is something that I honestly never really thought about in evaluating why that never happened. Yeah. Yeah, right. I guess, you know, you have... uh you have a a long travel day or two, and then then you know, quarantine. You know what I mean? That, that's a disadvantage for a week. That's a disadvantage. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. You know, um, you know me with this horse, and I'll probably put him right in a winner's circle by saying this. I I didn't like his race in in Saudi, uh, even though he was dead game and ran down Bookham Dano. Looked to me like they were both staggering at the end of that race. Okay, he made a little bit of a tones for that in the UAE Derby at a mile and three sixteenths. So, you, know, you know, one of the longer Derby preps. But my take on that race was, I just don't like this horse's action. Um, I don't like watching him run the way he gets over the track. Um, you know, I'm not a horseman, but I go by what I see. I just don't like the way he moves. He doesn't look like a Derby type of horse to me. Um, he is a fighter. He does have talent. He's never lost. I get all that. Um, but I'm with you. Show me. I, I'm just, just not, not a believer in him. I haven't seen enough out of him. And I, I, I very rarely will land on a horse that I don't like his action. I don't like the way he moves. You know what I mean? I watch him run and I'm just like, I just see something I don't like about the way they get over the ground. And, and, and yeah. he, falls into that category for me. Knowledge is not free. You have to pay attention to pass the wire TV. Nobody does it better. You don't break your maiden first time out. That way, if you can't run, we'll take a look at him and see if, if he looks in his first start at a mile as professional or more professional than Dornuch did. I think this was to sit off couple of horses sit in that stalking spot like you said that second flight and make a run uh and i think he's got a lot of room a lot of room to develop hasn't missed a workout either 
looks like. I think he's I think he's sitting on uh, a huge race and anywhere near four to one. Um, I'm I'm all in on Sierra Leone. Any move forward puts him square in, in this race and uh, catching freedom for Brad Cox was was my top choice here. Uh, so I think this race is going to set up very similarly to the Risen Star, uh, except I think Catching Freedom will be the one storming late down the center of the track. We should be looking for ways to, to beat the favorite in, in a large field. I think Resilience has been running against the, the top end of Derby contenders. I am on the one uh, Resilience as my top choice. I'm gonna use him my exactus, and by default, because if he really improves, I have to use him on my multi-race wager. It's the 11 society name. Chad Brown gets him ready, and he's, I mean, he's no slouch when it comes to a trainer as it is. For sure. All right, so Sierra Leone for me, Sierra Leone for you. Just kind of always been around it. Uh, Antonio Fresu is uh, an excellent rider. I'm on Stronghold in the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, endlessly, yeah, they had talked about keeping him on, on the turf. Uh, and then, you know, a handful of days later, they changed their mind. So it looks like this one's going to be in the Derby, um, turf pedigree. But you said, if I recall correctly, a couple weeks ago that, uh, turf runners tend to, to fare a bit better over the, the Churchill Downs dirt though. Fact. Very, very true. Um, yeah. Turf horses tend to run very well over the Churchill Downs dirt. And, you know, off the turf races at Churchill Downs, um, horses stay in, run very true to form, much, much more than a lot of other racetracks. I don't know the reason for that. I don't care. It uh, doesn't really make a difference. But it's statistically and, and, and you know, over the years, that, that, that is held up. They do run well over that racetrack. Uh, endlessly, to me, is a horse that's intriguing especially if there's a, a lively pace in front of him. I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he's got a lot of class. If he handles the Churchill Downs dirt the same way he's handled turf and synthetic, I think it would be a mistake to think that he can't surprise everybody at a big number and win the race. Yeah. Um, door knock. I wonder what kind of price he's going to be coming out of that, that bluegrass. Um, Danny Gargan had a couple of interesting comments the day before the race saying how that they were, you know, they had enough points to get in the Derby. So they were going to try and raid him and um, they were, you know, going to, you know, basically give him an education through, through the race. Um, I think he got an education and, and I think perhaps maybe all of us watching the race got an education too. Um, this a, a little bit of a, you know, Seen him seemed like to me some hedging in those comments. Perhaps he knew that the horse was was overmatched in there and was saying this to to kind of save face. Um, that's how I read it, especially you know, given the the effort. Uh, you know, if he sprung up and won, like phew, this horse is is fantastic. Uh, but you know, he gets beat pretty handily. Um, wasn't all that impressive in, in my view. And, you know, you could say, then, you know, he has the ability to say, well, you know, we were, we were trying things out. We we're, you know, putting them behind horses, what we're most likely going to see in the Derby just to get them comfortable with it. And, um, you know, we're, we're on to Louisville. You know, he, he is kind of like forever young with me. And, and I've said this since the Remsen. I don't like his action. I don't like the way he gets over the track. Um, I didn't like his race in the Fountain of Youth that he won at all. Uh, I think he won that race just because he was supposed to and he was just better than those horses, but he wasn't, you know, what I would call impressive. Uh, he kind of got got his, his his butt kicked a little bit in the, in, in the bluegrass. Uh, 
I, I think he's overrated. And I think that, you, you know, and I've, I've discussed this on other shows and I know a lot of people don't agree, but I think that Sierra Leone ran a much better race than him in the Remsen when everybody thinks, oh, he came back and outgamed him on the inside. That's, that's not how I saw it. Um, uh, you know, and again, not to be repetitive, but I did say after the Remsen, I didn't think he beat Sierra Leone on the square ever again, though thus far that's been correct. And I don't think that's going to change come the first Saturday in May at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what needs to happen, but hopefully there, there is a, a bit of buzz and, and hype around this horse leading into the Derby. So he takes some money, but I, I think this horse is, you know, one of those ones that is going to be, um, you know, priced in the, the top half of the field and um, is probably going to finish towards the back. You know, it's interesting you said that because, you know, they, they use that term wise guy horse, whatever that means. OK, uh, wise guy horse. I think there's two potential wise guy horses in here that are going to take more money than they probably should. Um, and one of them is dangerous. But the other one is the next one we're going to come to. You know, door knock is one wise guy horse. I think the other one is just a touch. I think just a touch is going to going to get a lot of money, going to get a lot of buzz going to be quote a wise guy horse whatever that is uh, we're wise guys john i think i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> but uh you, you know I, I i don't see and i see why other people will see okay but i don't see why he turns the tables on sierra leone yeah and I see all the reasons why people are going to say he will. Lightly raced, inexperienced, get to the jump, more seasoning, Brad Cox, rah, rah, rah. I get all, I see all of that. It's not that I'm missing any of that. I just think that Sierra Leone has more in the tank, and he may have more in the tank too, but he's going to have to have a lot more in the tank than Sierra Leone does to outfinish that horse. Uh, and I don't see that happening at a mile and a quarter. And I think that. He's going to be forced to, to move early with his running style. Um, and, you know, if the if the if the pace dynamics and the setup and shape of the race, you know, favors a horse getting the jump and moving early, then, you know, maybe maybe, you know, he's the one. But good luck. I don't I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think so. Brad Cox is a tough toss anywhere. But, you know, he's 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 on my fringes, but. You know, there's a couple of other ways I lean. Yeah, um, I'm a similar but but different. I, I think this horse, uh, you know, all the positives that you just said is is what I'm kind of subscribing to here. And I think if um, you know he's going to be in in that that early flight of horses, and you know if he does need to make that that early move perhaps avoids a bit of of traffic down the stretch where you know Sierra Leone coming from a little bit further back might get caught up in a little bit of it so you know sure dueling down down the stretch I, I'm not sure that that Sierra Leone gives way to to just a touch but if just a touch gets that that first run avoids a little bit of traffic um, and Sierra Leone gets caught up in a bit of it uh, just a touch. Certainly, uh, I thought his, his bluegrass was was pretty good. Um, certainly could be there late. And, you know, like you said, his running style could force him to to make an early move, which could potentially hurt him or, or help him. Um, you know, obviously, we, we won't know until until the race is unfolding, but um, he's a, a win candidate for me. Um, just based on his last effort, lightly raced, uh, his figures are, are in the top end of, of this field for sure. And, you know, I think perhaps that running style will, will work more to his advantage um, in a crowded race. Okay. I, 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 like I said, I see all of those things. Um, yeah. Just got a different take. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, Again, when when people start talking about these horses as we get closer and people 
hang on to a, a narrative, you know, it drives the price one way or another. And, you know, I think to your point, it could drive his, his price a bit down um, in a, in a direction that, that kind of eliminates some value on him for sure. Well, I would say this, there's always value in the Derby. The man, <laughs> yes. Even on the favorite, there's o- o- always value. I won't worry about that, but you, you know, I do think he's going to be an overlay based on, you, you know, what he's done and what, what we're going to be asking him to do on the first Saturday in May track phantom, uh, you know, had a, had a, had a, had a nice little bandwagon, um, going into the last race. Uh, and I guess now a lot of people are kind of off his bandwagon because, uh, you know, maybe he was exposed or maybe, I don't know. What do you think? Um, you know, I, I did say at the top here that, um, you know, catching freedom is coming out of the Louisiana Derby, which hasn't produced many um, Kentucky Derby winners. But if you look at it, you know, a lot of these top contenders prepped at one point or another in, in Louisiana. So as I'm looking at it now, you know, maybe, um, you know, eating my own words. But yes, Track Phantom prep down in Louisiana. He's a front runner. Um, and in the last couple, he just got, got caught right. He out on the lead, pretty much having everything is his own way setting, you know, relatively soft fractions and he couldn't get it done. Um, there's other horses coming out of those races that, you know, we've already talked about that are just better than him. And, you know, I don't, I don't see him having, you know, free run of, you know, going, going 10 furlongs out front by himself and, and having it his own way. I, I think there are, there are plenty of other horses that are just flat out better than he is. And, um, you know, this horse is a, a mid to, to rear pack finisher in my book. Yeah, I think I think you know one of the reasons I one of the things I like about him is he may soften up fierceness a little bit. So, yeah. Um, West Saratoga. You know, it'd be interesting just real quick on Track Phantom just to see how fast he ends up going. Right, we talked about the the early fractions of the last you know twenty derbies. This horse has never run that fast in his life. <laughs> early, so <laughs> so you know. Maybe he doesn't soften up fierce. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting to to see. You know, he might not, he, he doesn't have a choice really. Right. Um, if you know, if history um, proves it again, uh, but you know, we'll see. Um, West Saratoga. Yeah, I remember going into one of the prep races that that he ran in. Um, I had had jokingly said that uh, this horse was. It was probably the Sam F. Davis, I think. Um, I feel like people talk about this horse, and I'm still trying to figure out why. Um, you know, he's able to have some in-the-money finishes to to rack up a, a fair number of points here, but I, I think this horse would be very, very, very surprising um, if he was in the mix at all. Agreed. I, I, I feel the same way about Just Steel. Uh, this one was a little interesting to me. Not necessarily a, a win, um, a win candidate, but one that I think will be uh, running late and and have a little gas left in the tank um, that might get into the exotics at, at a decent number. Okay. I, 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 exotics, I wouldn't argue against, but blanket of roses. No. Anna Marie. Also, uh, interesting to me, um, coming out of that, um, that Louisiana Derby, uh, pretty soft up front uh, I thought and um I thought he he ran well late 
late in the in the stretch to to get up for second. You know, he passed a, a handful of horses down the lane. Um, just looking at the the Brisnets right now, um, decent late pace figure. So um, I think will will be moving at the end and and be able to to gain some positioning late. Uh, a fringe. If everything breaks his way, a, a fringe sort of win candidate for me, uh, more of, of an exotic play, I think, when I start to look at that as we get closer. But um, I was really impressed with, with his last race, and, and I think, um, you know, deserves to be in the mix um, at, the end of, at the end of the derby, in my view. Yeah, to me, he's a kind of hit the board type. You know what I yeah. mean? Maybe at a price, maybe, maybe a horse to throw into supers and triples and stuff, and 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 and, and, and get a price. Uh, domestic product, the other the other Chad Brown, who <laughs> we learned the other day will be ridden by Irad Ortiz. So you got Chad Brown, Irad Ortiz, fifteen twenty to one. Coming off the Tampa Bay Derby win, where he split horses uh, over a track that I love as a track to leg horses up and get them fit, uh, and come off, you know, come off that track and run better than anybody thinks that they're going to. Uh, I say domestic product. Uh, he's a practical joke, I believe, and and and, and I'm not wild about him as a Derby type sire. But he was a heck of a racehorse, and and he, he, you know anything's possible, and you know bloodlines and the significance of them, you know, has changed somewhat over the past several years. I've got to call him a contender. I really do. Uh, I think he'll be running at the end, unless that practical joke, you know, mile a mile and an eighth, mile and a sixteenth maximum, kind of kind of catches up with him, but. You know, taking that out of the equation, he looks like a horse that can finish. Uh, I like the race he's coming out of. I like the time uh, since that race. And, you know, Chad's got one of the favorites in there with Sierra Leone. He's not running this horse just to throw him in the race and see what happens. You know, he's running him in there because, you know, he thinks he's moving forward and he has a shot. So, I'm yeah, say he's a, he's a he's a he's a player at a at a probably an overlooked price for for as good a connections as you can get in the game. Yeah. I mean, they were crawling at the start of the Tampa Bay Derby. Um, but he popped a 125 late pace figure on the Brisnet, which I don't know that I've ever seen one that high ever. Um, and his late pace from the Holy Bull was a 108. You know, they were also – somewhat crawling up front in that one too. Um, so yeah, we I mean, certainly deserves to be in the mix. I think just given the, that late stamina that, that we should likely see um, you just worry though, you know, with, with how slow early his two prior races were just, you know, how much is he going to have left to do when they're, they're going a bit faster and going a bit longer. Um, but I agree with the the highlights that you shared. You know, certainly should be moving at the end. Um, you know, if his uh, if his ped pedigree doesn't run out on him for sure. And let me give you a flip side to that coin that you brought up, which is a, a, a legitimate legitimate point. All right, we're going to see on on the first Saturday in May the first time this horse gets a realistic pace to rally into. True. Yeah. So that might actually work in his favor. He might have a better kick and, and be finishing better. And if, you know, those late pace numbers can be believed, then they might even improve because now he's got something to run at, you know, you, you know where he really didn't in the past. So I think that's an intriguing angle on this horse. And I think, you know, dismissing Chad and Irad, at 15, was he going to be 20 to one? I don't even know. Oh, you, know I'm, yeah. you, know, you know, this is a horse that can, you know, run past them all if, if he can get that kind of distance. So look out. It's, it's interesting. And in, uh, the, the sort of jockey maneuvering on, on these horses, you know, usually Irad gets, gets first billing with, 
with Chad, but you know, you've got Tyler Gaff Leone on, on Sierra Leone already. Um, was Johnny V has been on fierceness this entire time. I rad rides for, for Pletcher a lot. So, um, interesting to see IRAD turn up on domestic product, but when you kind of think about it, it, it makes sense. And I think, uh, elevates this horse a little bit, you know, like we've seen, you know, IRAD performs on, on these big days and on these big stages and these big races. Um, so, you know, definitely gives, uh, domestic product, uh, a couple of boosts up for sure. I just had an idea. Okay. And I don't know if it's a good one or a bad one. I, I'm sure Chad Brown would hate it and tell me, shut up in case somebody hears me. Uh, and fierce to, and, and, and Todd Pletcher might, might also, but for the handicappers point of view, imagine, and I know they'd never do it because they love to make a big spectacle at the draw, but imagine if Churchill down said, you know what? We ain't doing no more on the Derby draw. We're going to let them people handicap early on. Where you are on the leaderboard is where you are in the gate. One, two, three, four, five. And here's the post positions right here in front of us. Hmm. Ready to go. That would be interesting for sure. I, 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 I'm, I'm sure the guy, I'm sure the connections that are one, two, three might have something to say about that. But, you know, just, just, just throwing it out there. Don't shoot the messenger, even though it's not a or, messenger. Or the other way. No, not the other way, but where you are on the list, your connections get to choose what post they want. So didn't they used to do that? They used to do something where people used to choose. They used to draw and then you would pick your post. Mm, they I don't did. remember, maybe. I remember that. Yeah, not too long ago. They did that. They you would draw and then you would pick your post until you wound up with last with what was left. And of course, right. one was always the last one. Yeah, interesting. Uh, they did do that for a while. Unless yeah. I've just completely lost my mind, and, and, and that 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 that's a possibility as well. Um, catalytic, you know, this horse ran in those two sprints, then stretched out, ran credible. Um, yeah, you, you know, would have to go forward again significantly to win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I would be willing to gamble that you know he can't quite do that, or even if he did, somebody would be better than him, but. You know, looking for a bomb. I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue with anybody that was looking for a bomb and threw him in. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to get there, but I could see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you figure that this horse even takes a a, a small step forward, you know, could finish mid pack. Um, you know, depending on the trip, could sneak into you know third or fourth potentially, but. Um, you know, that's about as, as far as I'm going to get, I think. No, no, no argument. Now, deterministic is interesting. Okay. Deterministic kind of, kind of threw a flop in the wood, but he went his first start. What at Saratoga, he come back, he win the other race at Aqueduct in the slop, tough race, had a dive to the inside. Um, goes off a short price in the wood and kind of tanks, but it was his first start around two turns. He was going back on a fast track. Uh, I thought he was a bet against, and there were a lot of built-in legitimate excuses for him going into that race. Uh, if he goes in the derby, I would say he's the type of horse that can bounce back with a good effort. I just don't know that he's seasoned enough and experienced enough right now to handle all of these horses. But I do think he's talented, and I do think that he can, you know, certainly better his effort in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, I mean, if you if you like this horse, you should get a, a pretty solid number based off that that last effort in the Wood. Um, I don't I don't see it. I, I wasn't. I wasn't crazy about this horse going into the Gotham. Um, and you know, he, he proved me wrong though. You know, it was just so wet that day. It's, it's been tough for me to make heads or tails of, of those prep races that day, um, at, at Aqueduct. Um, and you know, I think the, the dud effort in the wood, I can't remember if he was 
was he caught around when that other horse went down that I, I think that might've bothered him a little bit in the wood. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it's, but those horses were already out of the race yeah, anyway. All be all right. Um, so I don't know, I, you know, to, to make myself, to make myself feel good about my analysis. I'll say that the, the wood effort kind of confirms uh, my suspicions about the Gotham day preps at, at Aqueduct miss, um, you know, didn't, didn't think, you know, we saw Jody's pride kind of lay a dud in the, in the Ashland at, at, um, at Keeneland. She came out of the Oaks prep on uh, what was it? The, the busher, you know, in, in the, in the mud. So uh, yeah, this, this horse isn't, isn't for me. Um, just don't know that it has uh, enough experience for what um, what's required. Right. Well, I think um, the next horse is a little bit interesting. The uh, only for, only for one man is the Geosetti oh, special. Only only for one reason. <laughs> Geo said he bomb at 106 to one. Geo, <laughs> Geo liked him, and he didn't like him necessarily to win. He said he was going to hit the board. So all, all credit to Geo for coming up with a, you know, not a lot of people come up with 106 to one shots. Yeah. Um, and he had a lot of positive things to say about Society Man. Uh, yeah, when you listen to his handicap of it, you know, it, it makes sense. At the, he, he nailed it. Right. He did, he, uh, he, you know, credit where credit's due. Uh, can he do that in the Kentucky Derby? I don't think so. Uh, but I guess we'll find out on the first Saturday in May, but I think he's a cut below a, a lot of these horses. You know, if we had fixed odds available and sort of prop betting on the Kentucky Derby available legally in the U.S., I would, I would make a bet to say that Society man would finish ahead of Danny Gargan's other Derby starter in Doorknock. Wow, that's an interesting bet, and you'd probably get a hell of a price. Yeah, probably get a hell of a price. Like it? Can't bet it, but like it. Maybe in Vegas you could find somebody. Yeah, maybe Mystic Dan. Um. You know, yeah. a, lot of people, a lot of people were kind of high on this horse early. I wasn't one of them, but a lot of people, I remember we did a show. I don't remember which one of the Derby Radar episodes it was, but we kind of shorted this horse a little bit. And a couple of people in the comments said we were making a mistake. Didn't turn out they were right then, but can it turn out they'd be right on, 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 on the big day? Perhaps, you know, I think this is another one, um, you know, I've, I, he kind of falls in that that just steel bucket for me, and though you know, even though he finished well back of of just steel in the Arkansas Derby, um, you know, he just strikes me as a a horse that's a notch below the best in here, uh, but not out of the realm of possibilities for him to you know clunk up into third or fourth. I think. I agree. Uh, no I more time. Uh, did you have anything else on Mystic Dan? No. Um, no more time is is kind of interesting to me as as well. Um, you know, I don't know, like necessarily who he's beat. But, you know, tell me if I'm off base with this. If, if you like domestic product, you kind of have to like no more time too, don't you? No. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, you know, so many people say things like that. I don't look at races like that. I look at every race individually. And so many times people will tell me something like, oh, well, if you like that horse, you got to like this horse. Because, no, this is a different race, different day, different set of circumstances. And. I don't like no more time at all. If he wins, I lose. Uh, last year, I said 
something to the effect of, you know, if you like Forte, you have to like Mage at a better price. And uh, somebody commented back on Twitter saying that he was he was happy that I was betting into the into the pools, and right. um, I was proven to be right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I I'm not. When, I love when people say things like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm not. A, I'm guilty of it myself. I, I I I normally don't say it. I'll keep it to myself. But some people make comments, and I'm like, you know, I'm so glad this person bets. <laughs> you know? I wish they bet more. I'm not high on on no more time. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily crazy about his win in the in the Sam F. Davis. Um, and you know, this one will be. Uh, a pass for me, I think. No argument. Uh, um, to password, I'll, I'll defer to you. I, I don't know that I've ever. I didn't I even. Know this, I don't. I don't. I don't know who this horse is. So, what do, you, what do you think of of that? You know, I, I understand what what Churchill Downs and, and the Kentucky Derby is doing, trying to you know make this a, an international event with points races um, in, in Europe and the Middle East and. And Japan, I, I get it. Um, and guaranteeing a you know an automatic spot for for this horse. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm kind of indifferent, you know. I don't I'm know. indifferent. I get the point. You know what I mean? I I like them trying to make an international uh, presence in the Kentucky Derby, but you know I could say this: if I had the horse that's 21 on the list. And you're letting this horse run when I'm competing in American races and maybe even running at Churchill Downs all year long. And you got this horse in because you want to give an international flair to the race. I would say BS and be a little upset, you know, but yeah, I get I get I get the point. You know, the European horse that I wanted to see in the race, notable speech. He just won last week at uh, I think uh, Kempton uh, won like a champion. That horse has a tremendously bright future. I wish they would have went for the Derby with him. They didn't. I guess they're going to keep him on cash on, on grass. He might win the uh, the other, der you know, the English Derby or the Irish Derby or whatever. But uh, I wish, you know, if we had a international horse in here, it was notable speech, the Dolphins horse, because I really, I really think that horse is a runner and a half. But yeah, he's not here. But I will say this, there is only one in the race. <laughs> only one. And that's Sierra Leone. Yeah. I I agree. I'll make him the winner, but there's only one. Yeah, like what more do you want this horse to do? You know? Closed uh, into a slow pace into in the in the risen star. Uh he runs about a hundred yards further than everybody else with that big wide move and sustains it. Yeah, the bluegrass. Um, nobody was really closing all that well that day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I agree with what you said earlier. Just a really a couple of of win contenders out of out of the field. Um, Not as many for me. You know, normally at yeah. this this stage, when we're this far out, I'm like, you know what? I got about 10 horses I'm going to have to really sort through and eliminate. And this year, liberal, I'd go five that that, that I got to sort through. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, maybe even less. You know, five would probably be, you know, really opening the door to a couple that, you know, I probably don't really think can win. I think, you know, my, my, my short list is relatively narrow this year, so. That bodes hopefully well for having the right horse. Uh, hopefully well for the seminar being successful uh, and cashing some big tickets or at least being alive in the Derby. You know, <clears throat> I like to play the pick six on Derby Day and Breeders' Cup Day. I used to like to play it all the time, but now I really only gravitated to it on those two days. And it's a tremendous advantage for me and my style of play uh if i could go short in the derby you know because it really leaves me room to, to try and be alive like the last big one i was alive in was with uh uh honor ap and sol volante where on, a, on an 1100 investment between the pick five and pick six 
I was alive for half a million dollars with Honor AP, which a lot of people say he ran the best race and ran further than anybody else in there. Never really looked like a winner. And Sol Volante, who didn't fire at all, but I was alive for, on an $1,100 bet, I was alive for half a million and 1.1 million. If you put yourself in that position <clears throat> enough times, you're going to bring it home. You know what I mean? And I've brought those home before. So you're going to bring it home. So when I'm that short in the Derby, I'm encouraged because I'm like, okay, I may have a shot to be alive with one or two horses in this pick six and pick five for serious money. And that's that's what it's all about, putting yourself in that position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually don't spread enough on, on these big days and try to go short everywhere and, and get crushed. So, <laughs> uh, well, you, you know, going, going short is okay. You know, you know, like my brother always says, you know, you know when we talk, he goes, doesn't matter how you play it. Everything else gets erased. If you're right, you just right. got to be right. You know, yeah. you can, you can overcome all the mistakes. You can come over, overcome all the negatives. You could overcome takeout, bad ticket structure. You could overcome everything if you're right. Yeah. All right. Well, plenty more to come over the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is a decent little primer. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll have plenty more. Um, over we, ran, we ran down everybody on the points list. We shorted the last horse a little bit because we don't know who he is. <laughs> but he's coming from Japan. He's got a spot because he won a race that gives you a spot. Uh, yeah. By the seminar time, if he's in there, we will have watched his replays and know exactly who he is. So no worries. Uh, but today, I don't know who he is. So, All right. All right. Ciao for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. Register now for the 2024 Pass the Wire Kentucky Derby Seminar. In-depth analysis of every horse, contenders, pretenders, live long shots, and more. The Kentucky Derby Seminar on PassTheWire.com. Reserve your seat today. Remember, nobody does it better. Nobody does it better.